think about the kids. I always do. And I've been here a while. I got to watch some grow up. And I was making fun of the kids last time they sang in that big group about Jimmy and his bowl haircut. But you know, what's funny about that, they once were those children. And at one time, those were babies that were brought up here. Okay, any kid, I'm not talking about just my kids, but any kid. It's neat to see those same kids today serving the Lord. It's neat to have seen that they grew up. And I got to believe that each one of them would have somebody that they're thankful that helped them to get where they are. I know I've got somebody that I'm thankful for. I've got several somebodies that I'm thankful for that when I was just a kid, they came and did something for me that helped turn my life around. If you think back, I think we all could sing that song. Amen. That was very good. The title of the message this morning, Brother Austin, he's one of them, little brat. Now he's running the sound room back there. Married. So funny. My wife and I were talking the other day and talked about people having grandbabies. And my cousin, uh, who is my age, she's got, she's got a couple of grandkids. And my wife and I said, well, we can't, man, I can't believe they've got grandkids. And we looked at each other, wait a minute. <laughs> Good night, we're old. <laughs> wow, we got grandkids. Anyhow, we're, they're waiting on Austin to make one. Uh, Psalm 69, Psalm 69, verse 30. Psalm 69. Psalm 69. I probably should have my Bible already marked there. Psalm 69. Let's all stand together. The title of the message, What is God Thankful For? What is God Thankful For? Let's all stand together. Psalm 69. The Bible says in verse 30, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Very easy time of year to stop and think about thanking God. We're going to do a little bit of that this morning, but then I want to go to a different subject, and I think you're going to have a good time with this. I know I have. I might be completely wrong, but I know I had fun making this study, and I hope and pray you do as well. Let's go ahead and pray. Uh, Brother Bill Davis, can you lead us in prayer, sir? Amen. You may be seated. I was at the senior program and I gave them a little excerpt of this. And I started out, and I'm not going to go around the room here, but I, I wrote some things down and I hope that uh, they fit pretty much everybody in this room. A lot of things to be thankful for today, no doubt about that. A lot of things that we can sit down and say, boy, I sure am thankful uh, for many things that are in my life. I, I'm thankful, easiest one in the whole wide world, I'm thankful I'm saved. I mean, I just, I'm thankful that the Lord Jesus Christ saved my soul. I'm thankful. He lo and I, a lot of times I think Christians, we don't live there enough uh, to where we remember how wonderful it is to be saved. I think there's a lot of times we let the world come in and take away some of our joy and take away things out of our life. Please understand this. It is so good to be saved. I don't have to worry that if I were to die right now, I would go right to heaven. I don't have to worry about it. I'm saved. I don't have to worry about hell. Uh, one fellow made a statement. He says, I'm an atheist, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud, and I'm not afraid of going to hell. And I thought, boy, what a crazy thing. But we do agree on that. I don't have to worry about going to hell neither. But not for the same reason, because I'm going to heaven, praise God. I'm so thankful I don't have to worry about going to hell. I'm a saved man, and I'm very thankful. I'm thankful for my family. I'm going to tell you, I'm so very lucky. I have a wonderful wife. I have wonderful children. I have a wonderful support group around me that some of them don't even like me, but they still support me. I'm glad of family. Uh, at the, at, when times get the toughest, it's so good to know uh, that you've got family. They care about you. They want to be around you. And I know sometimes we have different difficulties in family but understand this at the end of the day one thing holds us together and that's family and I love having a, I'm so thankful for that having a wonderful family I'm thankful for my church family I take that seriously. I hope you understand that. And if you don't take that seriously, I, I want you to give it a shot. We are all towing the same rope in here. We're all pulling in the same direction. 
I'm so glad to be in a room. Listen, even in my own family, we don't pull the rope in the same direction. But bless God, in this room, we pull the rope in the same direction. I'm glad uh, to have a wonderful church family, a wonderful church house, a place that I can come. And whenever the doors are open, we can have joy together. I'm so glad that I've got relatively decent health. I'm, if you don't have your health, you don't have much. It's difficult to deal with sickness and hurt. I'm so glad that I, I have relatively good health. And the bad health I have is my fault. But anyhow, I'm so glad of that. <clears throat> I'm so glad to live in America. Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine living somewhere else? I would love for the complainers to spend a month hiatus in one of these third world countries. I would love, I would love to watch them say, well, bless God, America's terrible. Go live in Iraq. Oh, it's terrible. Go live in Africa. Oh, it's terrible. Go down to Mexico. I'm going to tell you, America's a great place to be. I'm glad to live in America. I'm glad to have a country, uh, and I'm very fortunate to be here. I'm glad to have good friends. I really am. Think about that for a minute. I'm glad to have good friends. I'm glad to have folks that want to stay around, and I'm glad that folks uh, to help when I need it. I'm glad for my home. There's so much to be thankful for. I mean, could the list really end? Could, could we really come to an end of the things that we could be grateful for? Good night. Brother Coolidge is thankful for stupid maple spinners. The things that clog your gutters. Sometimes when you get older, you start to get confused. And I love being thankful. I, I love realizing we don't deserve what we've got. I don't deserve to have such a wonderful family. I don't. But boy, God gave them to me. What a joy that is. I get to watch my wonderful wife and my children in church every week of the world. I, I get to be with them. And, and I, you know, I'm here with my in-laws who God blessed me with ones I actually like. <laughs> boy, I'm glad of that. But, but can I show you some things? I, I don't want to take long this morning, but I must be honest, it might. What was God thankful for? Think about that for a moment. What was Jesus thankful for? There's some instances in the Bible where Jesus gives thanks. And, and we, we talk every year, it's so easy. I mean, we, we could, I could make a 10-point message on things we ought to be thankful for, Right? What did Jesus give thanks for? I want, I want to take you to a few in the Bible. Can I show you some? Matthew chapter 15. I, I want you to look at this. Matthew chapter 15. And as I started to study this, I, I, I got to be honest with you. I started getting a little excited. I know that's hard to believe. Matthew chapter 15. And I want you to look at a couple of verses with me. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 32 then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. Now see the attitude of Christ. And his disciples say unto him, Whence should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? And Jesus saith unto them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven and a few little fishes. I don't know who brought the fish. My good. Anyways. And he commanded, but it would have been nice if they'd have had a burger. <laughs> and he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. I want you to see this now. He took the seven loaves and the fishes and... He took the seven loaves and the fishes and gave thanks and break them and gave to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all. Can I ask you something? Who is he saying thanks to? Now, this is how I read the Bible. I'm sitting there looking at this and saying to myself, Jesus has thanking God he hasn't even made the multitude of food yet. He's not saying grace like you do to try to make McDonald's worth something. He, he's, he's not saying thanks for the food. Jesus Christ is saying thanks 
for the time that I can provide. Look, I want you to see. Oh, boy, this is so good. I want you to see this now. Oh, my goodness. Then Jesus, verse 32, I have compassion on the multitude. Because, ask yourself this question. Did Jesus not know how much food was there? Come on. Jesus asks, but that's a rhetorical question. Jesus knew how much food was in their proximity. You act as if, oh, Jesus didn't know he had to ask. Jesus knew. When a teacher asks you what two plus two is, you don't think she knows it's four? Jesus knows everything. So Jesus says, how much food we got? I'm having compassion on the multitude. Why? Because they're starving. Jesus says this, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days. Three days of revival. Man, I'd never... Three days, they're with him, with nothing to eat. They're not Baptists, I'll tell you that. We'd never have anything three days. We don't have anything three hours without eating. What do you think we're doing right now? Half my adults say, I want to serve in super church this day. Why? Two reasons. It's twofold, preacher. A, I get out of your message. And B, I get fed. And I usually take home about eight gallons worth of food with me. I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. I will not. Boy, this is good stuff. I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. He's thankful that he gets a chance to provide. He knows what he's doing. As I look at this, Jesus Christ knew. And, and by the way, let me ask you this question. This is so good. I'm a preacher. I want you to know that if you're not needy, don't worry about God providing. Listen, look at me. Listen to me. God provides for needy people. He wants to provide for you. We get to the point where we don't need him. Oh, I don't need him. I've got stuff. You need him. I don't care how much stuff you've got. You need him every day. Well, he doesn't live up to my expectations. Then your expectations are in the wrong place. I know sometimes we can't figure out God. Be thankful you can't. And here's God. having up. He's giving thanks. To who? He's God. He's already there. He's giving thanks, saying, Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing me to provide for a needy people. He's thankful that they're needy. He's thankful that he gets an opportunity to provide. <laughs> you know, there's times we reverse that role. There's times we say, why should I bring in a Christmas gift? I'm thanking you in advance for bringing in Christmas presents. If you were Jesus, you'd be thankful for the opportunity to give one. I, I want you to know, am I, am I telling you lies here? Jesus is thankful. He said, well, he didn't have to do nothing. A, a lot of folks say that about Jesus. Well, you know, Jesus didn't have to do nothing. He's God. He, all he did is make stuff. He just says it and he gets made. You know, it's amazing. The Bible says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? God looks down at you and says, you know what, man? If you need me, I'll help you. And I am glad and happy and thankful to do it. The attitude of Christ amazes me. As he looks down at Bethel Baptist Church this morning, having compassion on those that perhaps have spiritually fasted uh, for several days, uh, perhaps they have not read their Bible as they ought to, perhaps they haven't prayed uh, like they ought to, he looks down and having compassion says, you know what, I'll take what I've got in this room and I'll multiply it throughout the room and I'm thankful uh, to get the opportunity to provide for a needy people. I see Christ walking those streets, realizing what's coming, getting excited that he's going to find a few fish. He's going to find a little bit of bread. And bless God, when he finds it, he's going to get to show them, provide for them. He's excited to be able to give. And he's thankful. He gives thanks for being able to give to you. It's not an inconvenience to God. He waits to hear from you. He's thankful. Thank you, Brother Jordan, for asking. How many have ever been tired of somebody constantly asking them for stuff? Yeah. 
<laughs> Imagine having a walking caravan of people. Always murmuring. Check your Bible. Always. Well, God, here we are out in the wilderness. Sure aren't providing milkshakes. Sure would like a little water. Brought us out here, God. I know you. And I always get a crack. Boy, this manna sure is wonderful. Thank you for all the Nilla wafers. Sure would like some quail. Boy, that's a Christian, isn't it? Okay. You study your Bible, he makes a quail about three feet deep, 96 miles in diameter. Just study your Bible, work out the numbers. I figured that out one day. A big circle, 96 miles wide, three foot deep of quail. There's your Kentucky Fried. We've been eating chicken ever since, bless God. Now understand, he, he's thankful for the opportunity to provide to his people. You don't bug God. He's thankful to do it. Look at John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Verse 38. Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. And Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I want you to see what happens here. I'm thankful that thou hast heard me and I knew that thou hearest me always, but because, why is he thankful? But because of the people which stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Jesus is thankful for the opportunity to pray for us. Study your Bible. The Bible says that there's uh, the spirit within us prays for us with uh, words which cannot be uttered. He has the opportunity to show the world how wonderful he is. He has the opportunity to show the folks there that are unbelievers. They're not believing what's going on. They, they may be saved, but they don't know. They don't believe what's going on. They believe that Lazarus is dead. They believe that there's no hope. They believe that it's impossible. They believe that nothing's going to happen or go right. Jesus says, I thank you because they're going to get to see of the wonderful miracle that God can do. He's thankful to be able to show revival. He's thankful to be able to answer prayers. He's thankful. Bless God. If you need him, he's thankful. If, he's, if you need him, he's thankful to provide. Not only that, he's thankful to be able to go ahead and show you the great miracle. Listen to me. Jesus is happy to be your Jesus. He's, listen, this is God thanking himself. This is God in front of all these people that, by the way, were saddened over this death. It's just a minute you see him, Jesus wept. Why did he weep? It wasn't because he knew what was coming with Lazarus. Jesus is not ignorant. He knows that Lazarus is coming forth. He knows what he's about to do. He's weeping because he's still surrounded by people that won't trust him. He's thankful because he realizes that through this, some are going to get to know him. He's thankful that, and I said some. He's thankful for those that want to know him. He's thankful for those that see the greatness of God. And I've never seen a Lazarus come out of a grave. I've never seen that. But I've seen God do things. I've seen God do things that don't make any sense. I've seen God raise my daddy up out of a bed and get him to walk again. I've seen him do things that you, you'll never understand. But I only can say this, that God's up there saying, thank you. Thank you. Why? Because you showed that preacher how real I am. 
Thankful. Let me tell you something. God is real. I said God is real. And I hope and pray that 300 are down there on the courthouse lawn doing what? Showing that God is still real. He's thankful for those opportunities. He's thankful when Christians turn their lives around and look upon him. He's thankful. Can you imagine God's thankful for us? Man, wrap your head around that. Lord, if you'd have been here, he had not died. That's our issue. And, and Jesus could have just said, you know what? I'm going to stay away for another week then. Come on. T- Christian, this is where we live. Well, you can. Yeah, I'll thank you, God. But you're going to have to provide like I see fit. Like Jesus resides in some lamp that we can rub. And well, bless God, I got three shots at it. Would any of your wish be, I hope the whole world gets saved? Would that, be your, would that be your first wish? No, I might save that for the third one, preacher, but I'm getting money first. My first wish would I wish for 10,000 more wishes is what I'd wish for. He's thankful for his prayer for us, for his desire for us. He's thankful that he got the opportunity to show how great he is. Turn into Matthew chapter 11. What's God thankful for? Matthew chapter 11. Verse 25. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father. I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, Because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What was he thankful for? He was thankful that there were some that would see his path. I'm glad. Look at me. I'm glad. I'm glad to be dumb in Christ. What's that mean, preacher? (laughs) The wise and prudent try to find a way to get to heaven that's not Christ. And, and you can frame this any way you want to, but it's the truth of it. And I don't care what religion you put in front of it. The title is irrelevant. It's all about humans trying to make themselves something that they're not. God looks down and he sees somebody like me, somebody like you that says, you know what? They're just trusting in me. They're just trusting in me that I am the payment. They're trusting in me that I am the answer. They're trusting in me and not trying to find anything else. And I'm thankful, God, that I'm the one that these folks are looking to. Bless God, I'm thankful that they're not trying to be wise in their own eyes. They're not trying to be the prudent of them in and of themselves. Bless God, I'm thankful for a group of Christians that are just trusting Christ and Christ alone. He's thankful for the opportunity for people to come unto him. By the way, you don't have to come any different than you are. That's what I love about the Lord. You don't have to be super Bill to come unto him. You don't have to be special, Brother Harry. Aren't you glad? You don't have to be something magnificent to come to God. He wants you just like you. Aren't you glad that the Lord is not only willing to allow you to come, (laughs) he's thankful for it. Boy, I thank God I got a snot-nosed bus kid that came to me today. I'm thankful I had a little brat walk up into the upper room, 11 years old, and some man that I love very much uh, led that young man to Christ, and, and now he's preaching my gospel. Thank you, God, for allowing him to come. Think about your own life, how good God's been. Wait a minute, though. We're, we're thanking God, and, I, and this is the year. Oh, thank God, this is Thanksgiving, and before I eat this turkey, I'm going to thank you, God. Wait a minute. God looks down and thanks you. 
how staggered are you right now? Thank you for coming to me my way. I got to be honest with you, his way was the only way I could come. Look at yourself in the mirror. His way is the only way I could come. Lord God, you got to have a room for a sinner. Lord God, I don't think I could ever live right enough. Lord God, I don't think I could ever do good enough things. Lord God, all my righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Lord, you better make a way. Oh, I got a way. Do good works. Oh, I got a way. Go to a Catholic church. I'm not just picking on them. Take your pick. Any church you want. That's not God's way. He says, I am the way. Thank you, Father, for allowing folks to come that way. Boy, God, he's thankful for us. <clears throat> Shouldn't we be thankful for him? What's God thankful for? He's thankful for the opportunity to provide for a needy people. How many have ever had God provide for them? Come on now. God's provided for, you know what he said when he did it? Thank you. He said, thank you. I, I can't even fathom that. Thank you for letting me be inconvenienced. How many have ever said that? Thank you. Thank you for calling me to plunge a toilet. I've never said that, not one time. I've never done it. I mean, I'm not mad over it, but I'm surely not thankful for it. I would to God the kids would eat more fiber. <laughs> Let's try to fix the root of the issue. He's thankful for his provision. He's thankful for the opportunity to be able to show you his greatness. He's thankful for the path that he's made for us. I want you to turn to Acts chapter 1 real quickly. There's a couple of verses I want to turn to here. It's only 1130. We're doing good. Acts chapter 1. I want you to see this verse, and I want you to hold this one in your mind as we go to the next one. Acts chapter 1 verse 3 says, To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. He showed himself alive after his passion. I want you to see that verse, and I want you to go over to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. And I want you to look in verse 19. Luke chapter 22, verse 19. And he, this is Jesus here. And he took bread and gave thanks. You say, well, preacher, he's thanking for the food. That's not what he's thanking for. He took bread and gave thanks and break it. And gave unto them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. He took the bread, gave thanks, and break it. Now, over in Mark chapter 14, verse 23, he says the same thing about the blood. He took, let's look at it. I'm not going to, we got time. Look at Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. And I want you to look at verse 23. And he took the cup, verse 23. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And they all drank of it. And he said unto them, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Who's he thanking? What's he thanking them for? You know, it's, it's one thing to provide, right? I mean, how wonderful is God to provide? But then to say he's thankful to do it is, is a staggering thing, especially for a bunch of sinners like us. It, it is amazing to me that he is thankful to show us his greatness. 
He's thankful for it. To watch a Christian or a sinner go closer to Christ, to have a desire to get closer to Christ, that the, something miraculous happens in their life, that they, and he's thankful for that. that that's, that's one thing. Then to know that he allowed us to see it. He showed you the way to salvation. I want you, know, I want you to think with me. He could have kept it hid from, from folk like us, f- fools, those that didn't maybe have a lot of knowledge or maybe weren't that smart. God said, I've reserved it and I am thankful to show it to you. I'm thankful to show my pain. Aren't you glad you can understand the King James Bible? I'm so glad uh, that I've showed it to you that I am the way, the truth, the life. I'm so glad. This is a whole different thing here. I'm asking you a question, and, and, and this is what I had to try to think in my, in my mind. <clears throat> God never, ever doesn't know what's going on. Okay, the people in that room, and I want you to put yourself there. The people in that room are trying to figure out who betrayed them. I mean, the people in that room, they had no idea what was going on. Even though Christ tried to tell them, tried to show them, they were more worried about being the greatest in the kingdom than figuring out what was going on here. Study your Bible. There's things that these, and by the way, that happens to us all the time. I'm not quite sure, but Jesus is always sure. Jesus knows, right? So he's in this room. He's got the bread and they've got this upper room and they're all gathered there. And one's going to betray him. And Jesus knows this. He knows who it is. And Jesus tells them by breaking this bread, this is my body, which is broken for you. They have no idea what he's talking about. Study your Bible. They have no idea. They're shocked at what comes next. Yet Jesus knows, right? I mean, Jesus knows what's going on. Jesus knows that he's headed to the cross. That's why he came. There's Jesus breaking bread. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be broken. Thank you for the opportunity to have my passion fulfilled. Boy, it's quiet. What's Jesus thankful for? Don't tell me he's being thankful for the bread. Don't you give me that. Thank you. Thank you for this cup. Thank you for allowing me to shed my blood. What? Thank you for allowing me to become the sacrifice of all the world ever. Thank you for allowing my body to be broken for you. Thank you for allowing me to spill my blood for you. Because let's face it, wouldn't one prayer of thanks be good enough for both? If he was just talking about the food. Hmm? I mean, I know once I pray for the food, I just go ahead and eat it. I go ahead and drink whatever I drink the ginger ale that's in front of me. Bless God. I I don't wait. Oh, thank you for this. Thank you for the rice. Thank you for the meat. Thank you for the no, no, no. It's one thankful and that's it. Bless God. We got to eat. I my mouth's full from then on out. It's just not polite to keep talking. But wait a minute, there's Jesus. And I want you to think about your salvation for a minute because it's because of him having his body broken and his blood spilt that you go ahead and get to be saved. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. And Jesus replies back, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Are you kidding me? Thank you for letting me come down 
be born of a virgin, put in a stall. Thank you. Thank you for letting me walk that road. Thank you for letting me show you the miracles. Thank you for letting me provide. Thank you for letting me go to Calvary. Thank you for being put on the cross. Thank you for letting me get scourged. Thank you for letting me get mocked. Thank you for letting me get spat upon. Bless God. Thank you for letting me be your Savior. Are you kidding me? I don't know if I can make it to church this week, preacher. Are you kidding me? If you look at what Christ is thankful for, Read the Bible. Jesus, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for these wounds. Jesus, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for that hole in my side. Jesus, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for the crown of thorns I got to wear. Jesus, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for you being mocked. I'm not having the best time dealing with that. Thank you is what Jesus is going to say. As we think about this season, and I know you're going to sit around a table and you're going to eat some turkey, or for you adventurous ones, tofu turkey. That's an adventure I'm not going to go on. And we thank him for everything that we ought to thank him for. The things I mentioned, we ought to be thankful for those things. There's no doubt about it. Jesus doesn't work that way. He works... In a way of saying, thank you for allowing me to be your Savior. And everything that comes with it. Because you must ask yourself a question and we'll pray. Did he not know what was coming? You study Isaiah 55, 54, 53, study those chapters. Uh, he wrote that too, and I think he knows what was coming. So I, I don't think anything ever occurred to him. And when they sit there and tell you, oh, he, he's going in agony. Perhaps. Because I'm sure he had some agony in the garden when he realized he was going to take the sins of all the whole world on himself and his daddy was going to forsake him there. I, I'm sure. But his thankfulness outweighed it. Oh, my goodness. His thankfulness outweighed it. He looked and said, in the future and said, well, bless God, I'm going to have a young man named Christian. He's going to come. I'm so thankful he's going to be in church. He's going to hear the gospel and he's going to get saved. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that I'm going to go ahead and go to the cross. I'm so thankful that brother Mike is going to come. I'm so thrilled. Are you kidding me? I'm so thankful that you're going to be here today and get saved and, and love me as a Savior. I'm so thankful I'm going to go ahead and have my body broken. I'm so thankful I'm going to go ahead and have my blood shed. I wonder if that would change our attitude just a little bit on what have you done for me lately? I studied this and I said to myself, my soul. He didn't just do it because he had to. He made the rules. <laughs> he didn't just do it because he wanted to. I mean, I do things that I want to that I'm not thankful to do. Right? I want to keep my garage clean. I'm not thankful to clean it. Wait a minute. He was thankful. He was thankful. He busted the bread up in front of him and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Thank you for allowing me to be broken. Isn't that what that's saying? 
thank you for allowing me to shed my blood. How much does he love you? Don't you ever look at me and say, God doesn't love me. Don't you ever look at me and say, God doesn't care. He gave thanks. He gave thanks. How good is God today? How good is God today? Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, we love you. I don't know that you could be more amazing than this. Uh, miracles are tremendous. and I, I, I love to see you do great works here. and I know you're thankful to do them. But Lord, you've gone to prepare a place for me. That where you are, I can be too. And Lord, you are thankful to do it. I, I, I can't, I, I just can't fathom that. As I see you giving thanks here, it's more than just for the meal. Because this is really, truly not a meal. Lord, what you're doing is you're saying thank you for the opportunity to be our sacrifice. You're saying thank you for the opportunity to have sin judged on you. You're saying thank you for allowing, for us allowing you or you allowing you to be the lamb. Lord, thank you. I, I don't know what else to say. I don't think there's words that can frame it. You saying thanks is, it's preposterous to me. But I sure am glad that you're my Savior. I'm sure I'm glad that you love me that much. I sure am glad that you love sinners that much. It's your passion. And you're thankful for it. I'll never understand it, but I sure am glad for it. Lord, please bless this invitation. We love you, and we sure do thank you for loving us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.